going to be taking a look at the WorkTab 4 volt cordless screwdriver model SO21. So let's get started. On the bottom of the electric screwdriver, we have the USB type C charging port. Moving further up, we have the rubberized single speed trigger, as well as the forward and reverse slash lock switch. Moving to the top of the electric screwdriver, we have the battery charging indicator, as well as the forward and reverse indicators. And at the front of the electric screwdriver, we have the LED lights, as well as the attachment drive slash chuck, AKA the bit holder. Now the cool thing about this electric screwdriver is you can use different attachments for it, like an off-centered chuck, a chuck with an adjustable clutch, a cutting head attachment, also known as electric scissors, and a right angled chuck. And the attachment drive also has a chuck built into it so that you don't need to use any of the attachments if you just want to use the bits with the screwdriver itself. Size wise, it's definitely not the smallest electric screwdriver on the market, but it's pretty darn close, especially for the, its form factor. And being so small, it can get you into a lot of tight areas that you can't get a normal drill into. Without any of the attachments on it, it weighs only 356 grams, which is pretty lightweight. If you use it with its heaviest attachment, the electric scissors, it weighs 495 grams. The second heaviest attachment is the clutched drill head, which weighs 443 grams. The third heaviest attachment is the off-center chuck, which weighs 442 grams. And the last attachment is the right angled chuck, which weighs 427 grams. Everything all together, including the screwdriver, the attachments, the drill bits, the charger, the charging cable, instructions, and case weigh a grand total of 1,512 grams. Now let's talk a little bit about what you can expect to be able to do with the screwdriver and what you can't. The electric screwdriver is capable of using hex shank drill bits and it was able to drill into a pine 2x4 fairly easily up to about the size of a 5 16 inch bit. Drill bits bigger than 5 16 inches still will drive in but you're not going to be setting any kind of a speed record and honestly at that point you're just better off using a real drill. Now the problem with using drill bits with this particular screwdriver is the fact that the drill bits are held in via a magnet not a locking mechanism. Meaning when you go to remove the bit from the wood or whatever you're drilling into there's a fairly good chance that your bit will stay in whatever you're drilling into and you'll be left holding an empty screwdriver or it'll fall to the ground and you'll be forced to practice stretches. The biggest bit I was able to use with this electric screwdriver was a half inch drill bit and that took about four minutes in order to get through a pine 2x4. It took a lot of stopping and starting and honestly it just is not worth the time. These electric screwdrivers are really made for assembling and disassembling things that already have pre-made holes or are thin wood or softer than wood. So honestly, using drill bits with this just is not a good idea, but it gives you an idea of what kind of power this has. And trying to screw anything in without pre-drilling a hole it is pretty much useless with this screwdriver. But like I said, that's to be expected with a four volt screwdriver. Now let's talk a little bit about the cutting head. One of the main reasons why I ended up purchasing the screwdriver was for the cutting head. And at first I was fairly impressed with how well it was doing. It could cut through cardboard like a hot knife cuts through butter. So it was doing a fantastic job with cardboard. Unfortunately, that's really about the only thing it was doing a good job cutting. Now, when I tried using the cutting head attachment on a more flexible material, the more flexible material would make it pass the cutting blades and start to bunch up behind the blade, causing the electric cutting head to stop working. And trying to remove the jam, it was honestly kind of a pain because it doesn't just pull out. You have to kind of work it out. So using it on more flexible material just was not really that great of an experience. But it was still a better experience than with plastic. Plastic would cause the rotating blade to hop over the fixed blade, causing the cutting head to become jammed. And in order to fix this jam and repair the tool, you would have to take off the guard, which was just one screw, and then you'd have to take off the blade, which was another screw, and then you would have to reattach it on the right side of the fixed blade, and then reattach the guard. Overall, it was not a smooth experience, and I cannot recommend this at all if you're intending to cut plastic like I intended to. The only thing the cutting head did a very good job with was cardboard and if you're needing to cut out say patterns for a backdrop or for a school play or something it'll work great for that but if you're needing it to cut down cardboard boxes or just anything that requires you to go around corners of something it just is not going to work very well for you and if you need it to cut say a flexible material or a harder 
material that might put up a little bit more of a struggle like a harder plastic it's just not going to do a very good job so my experience with the cutting head attachment just was not very positive now the other attachments are definitely more useful and are superior in my opinion the right angled chuck worked great for removing screws from tight areas or for putting screws into tight areas as long as there were pre-drilled holes in place and I used the off-centered chuck to put this hole in and to use a countersink to drill it out so I could put the screw fully in and it worked pretty well for that even if it did take longer than say if I was using a higher end tool but it got the job done and at the end of the day a regular drill couldn't have done it and last but not least the chuck with the clutch was a very nice attachment it definitely will protect you from egging out something or from going through and ruining a fastening post if you're working with a soft plastic so I would definitely recommend that attachment for sure and honestly that's where this electric screwdriver really shines is its ability to disassemble and assemble things it's not really good for drilling into wood or for driving screws into hardened materials like metal or wood but if you're trying to uh, reassemble something or uh, disassemble something that already has pre-drilled holes or already has screws in it i think this electric screwdriver will be able to complete most tasks that four volt screwdrivers can do. But there's a pretty big downside to this electric screwdriver, and that is the battery. It uses a single 18650 battery, which has been spot welded into the circuitry, making it impossible for a quick change and very difficult for a replacement if you don't have the right knowledge or equipment. Furthermore, the 18650 battery comes from an unknown manufacturer and is only rated at 1,300 mAh's. This is not a very big battery and it's going to make the life of this tool much shorter than it would be if it had a bigger battery in it. Say a 2,000, 2,500, 3,000 or even a 3,500 milliamp battery would have given you substantially longer run times and would have made this a much more usable tool in the long run. So not impressed with the battery in this scenario, especially for how much this electric driver costs. Right now the price of this electric screwdriver is $43.99 as of August 2021. And honestly, that is cheaper than say Black & Decker's attachment capable system where you have to buy all the attachments on their own. But at the same time, it's still pretty expensive for an electric screwdriver, especially for a four volt electric screwdriver. I'd love to say that it was definitely worth it and I would definitely recommend it. But at the same time, I don't think four volt really is enough power for most of these attachment heads. About the only thing I can recommend the screwdriver for, honestly, is if you need to be able to get into tight spaces and a full size drill won't be able to fit. The off center head is extremely nice and so is the right angled and it can get you into tight areas. But if those tight areas don't have pre-drilled holes, you're going to spend a lot of time drilling those holes because it's going to take the little screwdriver quite a while and it can't really drill through anything that's too hard because it's only four volts. Coupled with the fact that the battery is only 1,300 milliamps and the manufacturer is, well, unknown, it's kind of hard to recommend. Don't get me wrong, I really didn't have any issues with this electric screwdriver except for the cutting head but there's better screwdrivers for cheaper prices and honestly you can get a full-size drill for around 35 to 50 dollars so it's not really something that is super recommendable unless you really need that right angled or off-centered chuck that's about the only way i would recommend the screwdriver to anybody is if you really need those particular two attachments so let's recap real quick with the pros and cons attachments the attachments that this screwdriver comes with, coupled with the small size, gives it great versatility into getting into those tight spaces where you can't get a full size or even a non-full size drill. Because let's face it, manufacturers and even sometimes ourselves don't always think about how we design or install things. Rechargeable. I love the fact that this takes a USB Type-C connector, which is pretty universal at this point, and that you don't have to deal with those annoying expensive AA batteries or even worse, having to use a manual screwdriver. USB-C. I said earlier that it takes a USB-C type charging cable, which is pretty nice because that's becoming the industry standard for charging cables. Remember those days where everything had a different kind of charging cable and you literally spent half your vacations or trips or time just trying to find the right charging cable? 
nobody misses those days and nobody wants those days back. So overall, definitely a huge plus that this takes a USB-C and not a micro or some other weird connector case. It comes with a very nice blow mold case, which is very convenient for keeping all the parts and pieces in one place and protecting your tool. Small. While this is the smallest electric screwdriver on the market, it definitely isn't the biggest either. Coupled with the fact that it can use those different attachments means that you'll be able to get into some areas where you won't be able to get a full-size drill or even another electric screwdriver. So it's definitely a win for it in this category. Not variable speed. This does not have a mode selector switch, nor does it have a variable speed trigger. So it's not really that big of a deal, but it still would have been nice to have variable speed. Con number one, cutting head attachment. The cutting head attachment just really is not very good. When I tried using it on, let's say, a plastic packaging or even on a plastic c container, it just is not capable of cutting it. The cutting head wheel will jump over the fixed cutting head blade, causing it to become jammed and you'll have to disassemble it in order to fix it. And if you're cutting a soft material, the soft material will make it past the cutting blades and cut, become jammed behind the cutting blades. So it just is not a smooth experience. The only thing it worked great on was cardboard. So unless you're cutting cardboard, don't bother. 4 volt. 4 volt is usually enough to get the job done in most circumstances. However, there are circumstances where you need more power. And because this tool can use the different attachment heads and can get you into spaces where you wouldn't normally be able to get a drill or even another electric screwdriver into, it's disappointing when it can't get the job done. Say when you need to drill into a harder substance or you need to remove a screw that has been torqued down more than what you would normally find. Honestly, if this had been paired with an 8 volt battery, it would have been definitely way more recommendable than what you can get with a 4 volt system. Non-removable battery. This tool has a non-removable 1300 milliamp 18650 style cell in it, and honestly, I have no idea who made the cell. And the soldering job and the spot welding job in there just isn't really the most awe-inspiring of jobs. It does get the job done and it does work. It's just not the choice I would have went with. If I have to have a non-removable battery in a tool, it needs to be a bigger cell than 1,300 milliamps. And the last con is price. This tool costs almost $45 US and honestly, if it had had a working cutting head or an eight volt battery or a removable battery, it would have been far easier to recommend. Unless you have a job where you're gonna be needing those off-centered or that right angled attachment all the time, I really cannot recommend this tool. There are far better electric screwdrivers on the market for cheaper and honestly, you can almost buy a drill. I know it's not a drill and honestly, some of the other electric screwdrivers are still going to have some shortcomings, but for the price, it's just not really worth it. And I probably won't be keeping this one. In summary, it's not a bad little four volt screwdriver and it can do more than what a lot of four volt screwdrivers can do because of the different attachment heads. But at the same time, because it can do more and get into more tight areas, it almost feels like it's lacking power because some of the things you wanna do, you're not able to do because it's four volts. So that's really the biggest downside against it is the fact that it's four volts. And the fact that the battery comes from an unknown manufacturer and is only rated for 1,300 milliamps. If you can't tell, I'm not a big fan of the battery in this. But if you do need something to get into tight spaces where a normal drill or even some of the other electric screwdrivers won't be able to fit, this is a pretty good option if you don't mind paying the more expensive price. For me personally, I'm going to pass on it. It just doesn't provide the power I was hoping it would and I was probably a little bit too optimistic. It's not bad, it's just not good enough for what I need. So, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Have a great day, or night, or evening, or early morning, or whatever time of day it is where you are at.